name is Jen and welcome back to my channel Easy Ed Tech. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a pixel art activity. It's a math activity or anything with number answers that the, where the picture reveals itself as the students enter the answers. And it's self-correcting in the sense that if the student puts in incorrect answers, the picture does not appear. So the student knows they got it right and gets that immediate feedback as the picture reveals itself. So like I said, this is easiest made with something with numeric answers, so math or maybe science. Um, it's good for review or an enrichment activity. And you can pick any picture you want. Keep it simple, that's my advice. Uh, you could pick something seasonal like a pumpkin or you could pick something like an emoji or a smiley face. I picked one of the little characters from Among Us. It's an app or a game that the kids are really into right now. I know my son who's in fifth grade loves it. My high schoolers love it. So it really spans a large age range and it's culturally relevant to them right now. And I think that that if that students find that engaging when you do something that they're really into. Um, so anyway, I hope that you enjoy the video. If you do, please take a moment to like it and subscribe to my channel. And let's get started. Here's the activity I'm going to show you how to make. So we're going to round to the nearest tens place. And this is how your students will put in the answers. And the pixels will show up. And if they put in the wrong answer, nothing happens. So they know they did something wrong. And voila, the picture magically reveals itself. So let's go make one. First thing we need to do is go to a blank Google Sheet. And actually, the other thing you need is a picture, right, or a pattern. I just Googled pixel art patterns for Google Sheets and then click on images and printed out the one that I liked so I could count the boxes. This Snoopy one's cute, the it's little smiley face too. And then when I decided I wanted to do Among Us, because the kids are really into that. I Googled that and found one that I liked. And I used one similar to this. And all I did was, I it was this one. This is the one that I used. I just printed this out and counted the boxes and uh, did it like that. So we go back here, you need um, you need, you know, a couple of columns for your questions and answers. And then I found I needed about 16 columns across. So I just highlighted a whole bunch of columns, right clicked and said resize. Now this allows you to resize the column width. By default, the column height is 21. So I'm going to resize to 21. So they're square. Okay, so all of a sudden this is a lot smaller. You can do the rest if you want. Okay, so I'm going to choose the square that I want to start on. And I, the, the top of my picture is black, so I'm just going to choose black. And then I needed about 10 across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, it's a little too much, so I'm just going to highlight those two and click reset. And then I need one down, and you can either, you know, highlight and use the bucket. You can drag down. You can Command C or Control C, copy and paste, Control V. And then you just color in your picture as you would. So you need to build the activity first. And then we will add in the ability for it to appear and disappear. So you want to build your whole activity and you want to build your picture before we get started. And I used rounding. So for my directions, 
or something like that. And then what I did was I highlighted these and clicked merge cell and merged all these cells. So then I could choose a background color. I chose the shade of blue because I used it in my, um, in, in my activity. And I changed the font color and I changed the font. I like Lex and Deca. It's very readable. Uh, Google actually developed it specifically for readability and reading fluency. So it's the easiest font to read. So I like that one. Okay, it's a little too big because it's going. Oh, you know what I need to do? Text wrapping. I don't want overflow. I want wrap. So it goes on to the next line rather than overflowing the cell. And then I just put my questions and answers. This is a little tight, so I'm going to just drag this over. And then I filled in all my numbers. And then um, I also put my solutions right here so I didn't have to think about it later. So that's up to you, but I find it easier if I just put the solutions in now so that when I'm putting my answer key in later, I don't have to think about it. Um, so now let's see what the finished product is gonna look like. Okay, so I've got all my problems in here and I've got my solutions. And now, and I've got my picture drawn, now I just have to add some conditional formatting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the cell that has the answer. So I'm going to start with the first one. I'm going to click Format, Conditional Formatting. And now what I need to do is click Format Cells If and scroll all the way down to Custom Formula. Now. In the value or formula, I'm going to say equals dollar sign, and then I'm going to use this cell because this is the same cell B6 that has my solution in it. So B6 is the one I want to use here. B dollar sign six equals, and then I put my solution in 59.30. Then I'm going to pick my color. Let's start with the red that I used in the picture. And then I'm going to click Select Data Range. And this is in my way, but I can just drag it out of the way. And I'm going to press Command or Control and hold it down while I click these boxes. So I'm pressing Command while I click around on a whole bunch of different red squares. And then I click OK and then I click Done. Now, before I do anything else, while all these are still highlighted, I need to go to my bucket and click Reset. And what that does is when I don't have the correct answer in, it resets it to transparent. And so if I put in the wrong answer, nothing happens. If I put in the right answer, I get my squares filled in. So I'm going to erase that because I want to know which pixels I've already used. And I'm going to go to the next one and add another rule. Format cells, custom formula is, equals, and I've got the answer highlighted here so I know this is the correct cell. Dollar sign B, dollar sign seven, equals, and then I put in my correct answer. Now, this time I'll use black. Click on my data range, scoot that out of the way, hold down command or control, and just click around. While I'm holding down command, I'm clicking around on some various black squares around my picture. Then I'm going to click OK and Done. Go up to my bucket and click Reset. So I can see here I'm going to need to change my font color because when this one turns black, then I can't see the font. So let me put the right answer back in. 
so it turns black. And let's just make all of these a lighter color. I'm gonna make them gray. They need to be visible through the blue, the red, and the black. And we can check the red. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and format all of these until we are all done. It's the same process for each one. And I've got, you know, three or four colors in here. So just when you get to your last three or four, just make sure you use up each of the colors so that you get your full picture in there. Okay, so the first thing before I assign this in classroom, the most important thing, erase all the answers. Now, this is what they'll get. They get the original numbers, no answers, and no picture. So let's go assign this in classroom. Let's create an assignment. Give your students whatever directions you'd like. Add it from your drive. This is the one I want without the picture showing and the answers. I want to make a copy for each student. And I have grading categories. So you, if you want to know how to do that, I have a video on that, how to set up your Google Classroom. I'm going to put it under this week's work and go ahead and assign that. Okay, so let's see what this looks like from a student's point of view. Here I am logged in as a student. Let's go check this out. And this is what opens up for me as the student. Okay, I know I didn't get that one right. And there we go. So it's kind of self-grading in the sense that the student knows whether or not they get it correct. So that's the activity. And now when I finish with the activity as the student, I come back and I just click turn in and my sheet is attached already. Now let's go back to the teacher point of view and see if you made a copy of an activity like this, how would you change it? I will put a link to this activity in the description box below this video so you'll be able to make yourself a copy and make it your own. Okay, so say I found this activity and I wanted to change it. So what I would need to do is first of all, if it's not a forced copy, I just go to file, make a copy. And now this is my copy. I can change it as much as I want. It's not going to impact the creator's original copy. So I can go ahead and put in the answers if I want to see what it looks like. And so I can see it's going to fill in. So all I have to do to make this my own activity, say for example, I teach algebra and I want to make this about one step equations. I would just change the directions and just, you know, just type them in. That's all you have to do. Just change the directions, change what it says here and here. But the important thing to know how to be able to change is the answer. So let's say x plus two equals seven. Then my correct answer would be five. So that's not reflected here though. It's not gonna show up when I put in five. So I need to fix that. Then I can highlight the whole sheet. I just clicked on this corner up here and click format, conditional formatting, and I can see all the custom rules that I've created here or that were created here. So I can just click on this one and this is the rule for B6. This is B6 right here, B6, and I can see it's B6. So here I want this, to, this correct answer to be five, not 5,930. So I just do that, edit it to five, and now I'm done. And so now, when I type in five, the correct answer happens. So that's it. You can just go through and change your formatting. I accidentally created this cell is not empty rule. I can delete that. And you can see now B6 equals five. And I can do the same for all of these. I can go to B7 and put in the correct answer for B7. And that's all you have to do. Just change to the correct answer and click done and the activity is yours. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Pixel art is a fun and engaging way 
to introduce some math problems. Well, not really introduce, right? Really more review or enrichment. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please tell all your teacher friends about it. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Thank you.